Well, hello again. My name is Ben Leibovich. I am happy to be with you one more time. This is video three entitled Stabilized Underwriting in a series entitled Nine Steps to Analyze and Isolate Best Apartment Deals. As you know, this series is a review or maybe a little bit of an introduction for the Phoenix Syndication Workshop that my partner Sam Grooms and I are uh, hosting on January 26th and 27th. Let's dig in. Stabilized income. So we've gone through in, in the last video, video two, we went through and uh, normalized the trailing information, the trailing data, the trailing numbers. So we now have a pretty good idea of what this building is how it operates what the cash flows are where you know where the the kind of the the excesses are in the current operating structure of this building however what we need to determine is what it can do we know what it's doing we're not buying it because we like what it's doing we're buying it because we think it could be so much better. It could be doing so much better. So now, essentially, we have to go through the entire process of underwriting, but we have to be asking the question of, once we are done doing everything this building needs to be done to it, in order so that it can function at its capacity, once we do everything that needs to be done, what exactly does that look like? What exactly does that building look like? The operating structure looks like, look like, okay? So we will go uh, and start with rents. We're gonna ask the question, if these units were perfectly updated, if the common areas were perfectly updated, if this community was amenitized like this community should be amenitized in this location this vintage being what this is what would these rents be so the first question is what would these rents be if the building was functioning like it should now remember we looked at the a trailing information we had a schedule of rents and we had the rent roll if your answer to the question what should these rents be are the same numbers the same rents as what they have in the schedule of rents then and I, I I'm getting a little bit into the weeds here but you have no value add in this deal because the market as it is currently defined in terms of the t12 you are basically saying the market is the same so the one bedrooms they think can be rented for 700 if you don't think they can be rented for more than that yes you will have some loss to lease to recapture but that's not value add that's a little bit maybe of operational value add but you can't afford to go in there and spend $10,000 on this unit and ask for more rents if the answer to your question is this marketplace for this building, this square footage, this amenity package, this building, this location cannot justify any higher rents than the market is currently. So that right there goes into the trash. So obviously the answer to that question has to be a whole lot higher than the market in the T12. The next step we underwrite is the economic vacancy. And that's not something you so much need to underwrite because obviously you will have transitionary numbers because uh, you are assuming the building at point A and the stabilized 
picture is at point B. So you have to get those rents up. So you will have increased vacancy. You'll have increased loss to lease. But that's beside the point. That comes late in the process. The stabilized, once you get this building working like it should, once everything is stabilized, then what is the economic vacancy? And that's a function of uh, statistics. You don't have to guess at this. You can talk to property managers with you know 10,000 units under management, and they'll tell you uh, what the economic vacancy runs in this particular submarket. The same is true with your underwriting of stabilized operating expenses. We kind of like all know, all of us, what it should cost to run buildings. Um, if you are doing it for less, then you won't sustain it. It's not sustainable. If you're doing it for much more, then you got to look for answers to some problems. Because statistically, you know, as, as I've been mentioning throughout the course of these videos, uh, people analyze all of these line items. And there's no, uh, there's no kind of magic to what those numbers should be on the average. And of course, we underwrite to the average. Make sense? Okay. So once we've underwritten our uh, take, our perspective on what this building looks like in terms of once it is stabilized, then of course, we can underwrite the stabilized NOI. Now you can see if the projected stabilized NOI is significantly enough higher than the NOI you found out in T12. Why is that important? Well, because that defines your value add. If you don't have a high enough projection of stabilized NOI that is high enough above the uh, uh, trailing, then there is no value add. You can't afford to spend money on this building. So, but if it is, then you have some value add. But the question becomes, and I've mentioned this before in the series, is it enough value add? In other words, if you think you can create $2 million of extra value, but it'll cost you $1.5 million, then really all of the value you're creating is half a million dollars. Is that enough value for the effort of spending one and a half million dollars on the repositioning process? Because that's going to be a, you know, significant, regardless, even if it's a 400 unit apartment complex, uh, a $1.5 million repositioning is still a significant repositioning. But if you're talking about something smaller, 100, 150, 200 units, that's really a significant repositioning process. So do you really want to get in the middle of that if all you are getting on the back end of it is a half a million dollars of value? Or do you need more? So in order to answer that question, we have to now answer how much it's going to take. What is it going to take for us? to be able to reposition this building. And with that, we're now analyzing CapEx. We're analyzing uh, the costs of construction and the time frame that is going to take us to, you know, take this building from point A to point B. And we will tackle that and have that discussion in video number four. For now, my name is Ben Leibovich. If you haven't registered yet for the Phoenix Syndication Workshop, please go to justaskbenwhy.com forward slash Phoenix. Uh, the uh, workshop is on January 26th and 27th, so we're getting close. Don't miss this opportunity. I promise you, you will learn so much. Uh, Sam and I, my partner Sam Grooms and I are just really letting you know all of the secrets. So, uh, I look forward to speaking with you uh, in uh, the next video. And for now, have a great day.